All right, hey, it's Matt Coffey. I'm the uh, founder of Customer Bloom, and today I'm going to be doing another reading from my personal journal. I put out these uh, journal entries to help sort of think through the process of business. We're running a seven-figure business here, a uh, marketing uh, business, and we've come to a conclusion that by helping other people synthesize some of the activities and learnings that we've had, we can pass along some good dialogue and some good thoughts on things that are important that I've crossed my paths on and things that for you might have an impact of uh, my learnings and pass along some of the thought processes and solutions to things that occur on a daily basis. So this is dedicated to those people who are interested in entrepreneurial activities and growing their business. So without further ado, let's move on to today's topic. We're going to talk about breaking it where growth starts to happen. So breaking. Well, what seems to be a negative breaking is actually a positive in disguise. I've had fallen into a trap lately of not allowing myself to, to really decompress enough over the last couple of days and even felt a bit dizzy. But being dizzy from what? Decision fatigue can come from a loss of control of one's environment. As things grow chaotic in some days, there seems to be an issue of trying to cover too much in a short period of time. Overwhelm hits, and then we can't organize our thoughts clearly enough to dive into the baseline efforts of solutions correctly. What we're really talking about here is looking at reasons why in this case, I broke down in the fact that I'm literally, at the end of a day, dizzy. Now, there's a reason for this, and we're going to go into this, but this can happen from different angles. And I don't mean dizzy from a fact of physically dizzy, but mentally starting to construe thoughts where clarity becomes an issue. And when you start to get fuzzy on your thinking, you start to have problems with making decisions and that's why I mentioned decision fatigue and even though this is sort of a, a esoterical thought like how can you have decision fatigue it does happen and here's the reason we have to break old habits and form new ones even in decision making processes it's never easy without a doubt but breaking the walls down to build new stronger ones and building a better solid foundation of core rule upgrades to your system is one solution. This is where I came to the, the solution of this decision fatigue. Decision making at a higher level to peel back the real underlying items is at hand. So let's talk about this. We must go to source and use our brain to go into a hundred percent responsible mode. Right? So this is not an outside impact. This is a total internal impact. It's not people and other things that are making me dizzy. It's my decisions that are creating this. So we need to solve the larger items. But at what level of understanding must we step back and first decide what we don't want to do and break? I realize that one of my biggest issues stems from email overload. This is a huge contributory issue to decision fatigue. My email is broken. So my resolve is to look at this cause and to stake out what I don't want to do and break it. Imagine this. What would you do as a busy person, busy entrepreneur, or busy person during the day if you had no email? How much relief would you get knowing that you don't have to look at your email during the day? So this is the thought process that I had. What if I took the entire, e what if we didn't have email? What if I just said, you know what, I don't do email anymore. What would happen? We have the channels. We've got Twitter. We've got Slack. We've got other ways to solve problems, right? We've got other, we've got the phone. Back in the 80s and 90s, we didn't have email. How the hell did you get stuff done? So it's really interesting to think like, now I'm at a point where I look at the email box and it's not that I, I have stuff that's, that's on fire. There's just a lot of people who want my time. And there's a lot of 
other responsibilities you have. But really, it's the decision-making process on getting that accomplished. So I don't want another day of looking at this email box full of a bazillion things. So what's the causes? What are the relationships? What are the reasons why this happened? So if you look back at the stuff, probably about 20 to 30% of it is just stuff that somehow I've gotten on lists and uh, it follows me down rabbit holes. Another 20 to 30% of it is team members who should be using our internal tools like Slack and our, our dial pad service, like internal stuff. So there's 40 to 50% that could immediately be impacted. Now, we're not going to obviously get rid of email, but the things that are critically important in there only should be there. So what can easily be fixed also, the cure is completely clear as well. So really the cure to having a less decision fatigue day is to start to peel back pieces where you know you can break things and get them out of your way. So I can feel easier that a simple decision will start to solve my breakage. So where else are things broken? So this leads me to another consistently challenged issue. What else can I break? So one of the things I started to break recently was that I have to start to get up earlier because in order to get to the gym, there's just no way that I can do it during the day. It just won't happen. So I've broken the rule that past 10 o'clock, it's literally I will not stay up. I will be in bed. So I, I needed to break another thing, which was my habit of staying up and watching something or reading late. So these things need to be addressed in order to solve. So I've got to break things in other parts of my world. So my question to you is, what's broken in your world right now? What, what's causing you stress? What's causing you a, a, an issue that you know that you can break? That if you looked at the root causes, that there is things that you can do to rearrange where, where things are broken, you can solve problems by breaking something in front of it. So right now, what I'm going to do is break my email. I'm literally going to go in and just delete everything. I'm going to say, okay, everything's archived. Now let's see from day one, from the beginning of today to the end of the day, how much stuff is really, really critical. And then start to weed through it and say, all right, on a given day, here's my email box, 175 emails, whatever it might be. How many can we delete immediately or put on unsubscribe or tell the team, do not email me or tell the clients, go to help desk or whatever it might be. All these things need to be fixed as part of my breakage, which was in this case, the email dilemma. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope it makes you think. Have a great time with <laughs> learning how to break things and we'll talk to you in the next episode.